All right, it's June, beginning of June, base load with some important updates for our hook project and just other general updates. The fires up north, our thoughts are with them for sure. The people who have had to evacuate and some of the, the people who have lost their homes, the people fighting the fires, it's a serious condition up in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Alberta. Those fires are serious, so we're definitely holding on to mobilization probably at least two weeks. We don't want to interfere with anything going on up there. So the the least we can do is just let's just, just hold back, watch what happens, and stay out of people's way. We don't want to be driving up there. The, the roads are closed anyway, so we're not driving up there. For anyone who's not aware, uh, yeah, our VP, Mr. Cameron McKay, has, has decided to step away. All of our best wishes with him moving forward in his in his positions. Um, I do wish that I had Sarah McLaughlin's I Will Remember You playing right now, but unfortunately I'm not that tech savvy. So uh, there's, uh, there's already questions floating around, you know, especially so close to this drill program, considering something that we, we believe that we have a discovery on our hands at the clay alteration area, which we'll touch base on. But for, you know, from Cameron's perspective, I totally get it. I think it was the right move on his part. I was very supportive of it. it stability in this industry and in this, in this marketplace, I think it was a good call on him. He's got a young family. I've been in his shoes, so I can, I can see it from his perspective. And yes, you know, we definitely wish him the best in everything that he does moving forward and hope hopefully we can work together again in the in the future if if you know if circumstances permit the does it impact our exploration program no uh cameron's departure really does not impact our exploration program um you know we've targeted we've we have a list of targets that we generated over the years we've got drill collars and then implementing everything and, and, and moving it all forward permits are all in place and our our technical team they're all stepping up and very competent and able to fill these shoes and just we've got everything in place so it's it's no impact to implementing or or seeing through the uh, a drill program at hook the drill program you know, we're still in planning mode. We haven't come out with anything official. I just want to just because some of the ideas that that I'm going to address here, I just think it's it's beneficial that the investors get to follow us on this journey and see what we're thinking and understand some of the complexities that that we have in this area. And good, they're they're good things. So we've got about seven thousand meters to drill this summer. That's that's the plan is loose plan, approximately seven thousand meters. That's what we're going to plan on. We want to finish this cross section. We we can't just leave it alone. We know things are looking better as we go to depth, so we want to put on a few more drill holes and target that. That would extend our that alteration if we if we drill the ninety there, the steepest one. That would extend that clay alteration package at least three hundred meters down dip. But we don't want to drill. We don't. Hope, we're hopeful that this system does come to an end sooner than having to drill all of those holes. Because that's a minimum of two thousand meters. It's a big chunk out of a seven thousand meter program. If we if we hit something sooner, awesome. If the system's still open at depth, that's just that's five. That's in total, that'd be about five hundred meters of just pure clay alteration. So we don't know what to expect. Very very curious though, based on everything we've seen so far, to see what does happen at depth. So we have to we have to finish that. There's no doubt about it. But we will, and we will mitigate any risks. So let's just say hole number two, the the one in the middle there, hits fresh rock. And the one above it was massive clay alteration. Then we don't need to drill the, the 90. We don't need to drill the 30. And we can put, put a hole right between those two holes, the one the last alteration, then one fresh rock, and look for that redox front that would theoretically be between there. So we, we modify as we go. But this is the idea, and it's we'd be foolish to walk away from it. To touch on the second idea... For drilling at this clay alteration, we're going to step over to Accio just to demonstrate a, a geophysical similarity. The background that you're looking at is the 3D density model. Anything in blue would have a lower density than anything in in pink. No ex no exact values on this, just you know generalization. Accio is here in red. 
the sandstone is the yellow yellow polygon. But I don't know for the general viewer if you can see this, but if you take similar gradients on both ends, in this case it's the yellow orangish colors, you can see on the side that hosts Accio, that gradient is shallower than the opposite side. As it is right there. So that's the one we're looking for. We're looking for the shallower gradient, in theory. We come over to the clay alteration area. That's where we've been drilling. That Those are holes 16, 17, 21. Just a very quick, loose interpretation of the clay alteration area. Those are the drill holes that we planned. So you can see that we have to go deeper with these. And there's the gradient. In this case, trying to stick to the light blues between the, between the darker blues. The shallower gradients on this side. Interesting, hey? That we've... You know, that clay alteration that we've drilled exists, and it is worth following up on its own. But the shallower gradient now seems to be kind of interesting too, because if you remember from previous videos, if you've seen those, the top of these drill holes has lit up with a few different anomalies. The, the right clays are up there, as are the lead isotopes, stronger lead isotopes, more than the core that's between there and the alteration. So are those, I, uh, you know, we originally thought that that these could have been anomalies from a remnant paleo weathering profile. But what if these are actually anomalies that are coming from a, another structure, a, a parallel or subparallel structure that, again, if you've got these anomalies, they're worth chasing. So now this becomes another idea is that we have to test this new structure, which is about 300 meters east of the drill holes that we've already done. And to drill those is going to be another minimum 2,000 meters. The one in the middle of those orange drill holes, the one that goes very deep, that's a tentative situation. Again, depends on what we're seeing with the red drill holes. If all of the red drill holes are, are still in alteration, still in really strong potential alteration, then we, yes, we have, we're going to test it deeper. And we can do that with that one hole off there, but then we can follow up with two shallower holes to test principally that, that main structure or that, that secondary structure along the geophysical gradient. So that's, once we have all of that information, that's a long, uh, that, that's a lot of information within one section. It's a lot of drill holes all in a line, and we've tested a lot of geology after that point. So then we take that information and we can apply it, um, we, we, we can assess everything and apply it to testing the strike extent of these structures which this is our target area at the moment. We want to step back on, on everything because of the results of the last videos we've seen where things looking like they're, they're getting stronger and more anomalous as we, as we go down dip in the alteration towards the east and towards the north, so somewhere in that vector area. But after all of this additional drilling, if we're still in alteration, everything that we've drilled, maybe the mineralization is not in that location and we just have to go along strike. Hole 23 is 50 meters away from that, that section of drill holes. That would be the similarity to hole 16. And after all of this drilling, again, if we're still in alteration, then we will be better guided with, with where we could put one single drill hole or two drill holes on a follow-up section. And then we can do that on one more section. So if we're... You know, if we plan for one, just one more section follow-up, we've got a minimum 1,000 meters. If we plan for a two-section follow-up, that's 2,000 meters. Right now, after all of those drillings, one, two, and three, we're, we're at 6,000 meters, basically. There's your 7,000-meter drill program. Where do you go for the last 1,000? Do you just stay in this area? So these are, these are questions that we have, questions that we're still really trying to fully assess because we want to make the we want to make a really big discovery as quick as we can. This is a lot of drilling to go in this area, and if everything does keep coming up blank, well, that's that's six thousand meters. But everything that we've seen warrants it. It definitely warrants it. And the good thing about a lot of this is we can assess very quickly 
we can get an idea of what we're seeing very quickly in the drill core. The summary items between green and red, they're not, uh, they're not good and bad. <laughs> it's, they're all good. It's just what we can do in the field. We can see the visual mass of clay alteration. We can, we can see if it's the right illite because we've got a, a portable spectrometer. We can follow uranium to find uranium. That'll be radioactivity. But the things we can't do in the field are looking for those lead isotope fingerprints, the looking for the hydrothermal heavy rare earths, or the anomalous boron. Those we would need the lab assays. And if people are unfamiliar with those, with these summary concepts, then yeah, follow our videos on the Or Group's YouTube channel. I think they're very educational videos and we'll get you caught up on to why, why we think this clay alteration is so exciting. But that's the drill plan. That's a, not the drill program, that's a drill program planned, well, still in planning, for this clay alteration area. There's, there's a lot of, there needs to be a lot of room for changes to be made on the fly. And that's what we're working on, which is why this is kind of taking a while. But we want to make sure that we have plans in place that we can just implement on the fly and everybody knows what to do each step of the way. It's better to get that done now than having to worry and panic about it when we're up in the field. Because field work, you never know what arises in field work. Baseload Energy is part of the ore group of companies. Congrats to American Eagle Gold for starting their drill program. Awesome. If nobody's, if any of you are following that, I advise to continue following. Uh, yeah, that's great porphyry looking looking system. If you haven't followed them, definitely have a have a look at what American Eagle Gold has been putting out. A Wally with with recent successes. XXIX coming out with big news. Well, came out with big news. Yeah, Or Group's very active. A lot of good success. I've made four looking statements. And you can contact us via my email. I love to receive emails. Follow us on LinkedIn, X, and again, the Or Group, or group channel. Thank you.